Welcome to Agenda Edina, a program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. To add vitality to the Greater Southdale area, a significant redevelopment has been planned for the southeast corner of 70th Street and France Avenue. The City Council last month granted preliminary approvals for the redevelopment of 7001 and 7025 France Avenue, proposed by Orion Investments, ESG, and Mortensen. As part of the project, the existing office building and bank would be raised and replaced with a one-story U.S. bank with drive through a 24-story, 270-unit apartment building with 5,000 square feet of retail, a 10-story, 190,000 square foot office and retail building, and an additional 9-story, 110-unit apartment building. The 7001 France site is a transformative site for the city of Edina. This is a place that's a legacy type site. It's class A location. It's next to the Galleria. And so what's interesting about the site is when you look at it from a high level, there's been no new development on the east side of France in almost 50 years along this corridor. Uh, the Bauer is new, that's coming out of the ground. What we're looking to do is create an inspirational, aspirational development and really create a modern version of 50th in France at 70th in France. The development team is expected to seek final rezoning as well as approvals of an overall development plan, site plan for U.S. Bank and Platt early this year. Residents are encouraged to weigh in on future funding of street reconstruction in Edina. The city's utility fund covers the cost of curb and gutter and other utility improvements in a neighborhood roadway reconstruction project. Residents are currently assessed the cost of street reconstruction. Recent estimates for special assessment in neighborhoods with larger lots have climbed to over $30,000, a figure troubling to members of the city council. The City Council delayed a project in the Prospect Knowles neighborhood in 2019 after a task force appointed by the city manager could study the funding issue and make recommendations. One project planned for this year has been tabled for up to six months until a new funding mechanism can be considered. The City Manager's Street Funding Task Force believes a change is necessary and has developed two possible recommendations. Under the first, half of the street reconstruction would be paid for by special assessments and the other half paid with municipal taxes. Under the second, all of the street reconstruction costs would be paid for with municipal taxes. The city must prove by state law that the amount that we're going to assess you for redoing your street is equal to the amount of higher value you get now that you have a new street. Historically, we've been able to meet that test, but things have changed. We're starting to work on unique neighborhoods where there are long winding roads, big lots, but houses that are all different sizes. And in a neighborhood, there are houses that we can't prove that state law anymore. So it's time for a change, and we need your help and your input in deciding what this change is. Go to Better Together Edina, and I want everyone to participate in this, even if you have never had a street done. We're going to get participation from people that are currently paying or might have to pay in the future, but I want everyone in Edina to be able to have input on this so the council can make a good decision for our city. Comments on the two recommendations are being collected at bettertogetheredina.org through Tuesday, January 19th. Early this month, Carolyn Jackson and James Pierce will be sworn in as the newest members of the Edina City Council. They succeed retiring council members Mary Brindle and Mike Fisher, who were thanked for their service, which spanned more than a decade each. Edina TV has more on these dedicated public servants. Let's go! Recently, City Manager Scott Neal made special deliveries to two retiring council members. Nobody leaves anything in the diner without getting a cake. Mike Fisher had served on the council for four years, and Mary Brindle had served for 12 years. And we got this wonderful Dinah polar fleece blanket for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Shortly thereafter, we sat down with each of them to hear about their experiences and to learn about their unique approaches to leading the city of Edina. The parade sponsors. I was approached while I was working on the 4th of July parade. You know, you ought to really think about a run. And, and I, I just sort of, hmm, 
I don't know, maybe someday I will. But in order to do that, I really need to prepare myself. Because as I told them, I wouldn't vote for me. I don't know enough. <laughs> so in that, I, I really did dig in and learn and get to know the staff, the city staff, and, and develop relationships with people who could help me, really, and find out how I can then help them in a leadership role. And then it just sort of naturally happened in 2008. Yeah, I've been on so many committees and, you know, basically, you know, I moved here and in the year 2000, and I think I probably spent 18 of those 20 years on some committee or I knew in fourth grade that I was gonna be an architect because architects design cities. And I didn't realize until I became an architect that it was really lawyers and zoning administrators and others that were designing cities and architects were just coming late to the game. What areas were you most involved in? My committees have really been transportation based. So the I-494 Corridor Commission, the Noise Oversight Committee for the airport. How, you know, how are we going to incorporate transit? Those committees, all of them, I think, have helped me grow as a council member. You learn about how other cities lead and what's important to other cities. And if it's important to St. Louis Park, it's important to Edina. If it's important to Eden Prairie, it's important to Edina. And the reverse is true. I knew the comp plan was coming up and, and just I know uh, where we are in our life cycle as a city. And it's a, it's a lot of challenge and stress for people as we go through this change. So I figured this was the time that made sense for me to be on the council, if I could help in some way. Council Member Brindle. Here. Council Member Fisher. Here. When asked what guided their decision-making process, both of them said their parents were a huge influence. I actually thanked my parents because the, the notion is that you always put other people's needs of, ahead of your own was a very important part of growing up. And I think it translated pretty well for me into my adult life in that being a public servant, um, being in this kind of role, you're there. Your job is to literally look out for the whole look out for what I would call the common good. And, uh, and that's always driven me. Another part of my upbringing that I think contributes to how I look at things is I'm a musician. My father was a musician and he was my first teacher. And he might have been my best teacher, though I didn't know it at the time, of course. As a musician, I'm not a solo musician. I'm an ensemble musician. And it is the product of the group that you cannot achieve by yourself. So it is that understanding, that connection, and that almost unconscious link that you have with those around you to make something happen. We also asked, what were they most proud of? I'm proud of the comprehensive plan process. You know, our planning commission did a phenomenal job. You know, so many meetings, so much involvement. You know, we had every commissioner in our city, not just planning commission, but every commission was involved in writing a chapter of that plan. So I'm very proud of the way um, we all came together and, and got that done. I'll point to one thing in the community that people can look at and admire and I had a part in and that is the Edina K-9 Memorial that is right here at City Hall. It's a lovely bronze statue of a German Shepherd in on duty with his badge and I'm really proud of it. It's lovely and it memorializes the importance of Edina's police canines. Admittedly, neither one is fully retiring, but now they'll have more personal time. You know, when Ralph says, Mary, can we take off for four or five days? The answer is probably going to be sure. And so we do love to snowshoe up in the Arrowhead. And I have some crafty projects going. We've got a flat-coated retriever named Hondo, and he is the joy of our lives. My youngest son is still in college and he plays baseball. 
and he plays it in the southeastern part of the country. So it was a little challenging. You know, we would fly down there and watch a weekend baseball series and then fly back so I could be at a council meeting on Tuesday night. Um, this next couple of years, I'm thinking, hey, maybe we don't have to fly back. All of us in Edina thank Mary and Mike for their years of service and wish them well. Thanks. For Agenda, I'm Tom Cornell. Thank you for your years of service, Mary and Mike. The city of Edina continues to closely monitor the spread of the novel coronavirus and is keeping those who live and work here up to date about COVID-19. Please visit edinamn.gov slash coronavirus for the latest updates or sign up to receive city extra emails or text messages. On behalf of the Edina TV team, Happy New Year. Thank you for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. <laughs>